What's up everybody, welcome back. And thanks to all the new subscribers. I've been noticing a lot more recently. I've been doing a lot more videos, kind of getting back into it, and I'm gonna start doing more videos on the water. Gotta get those GoPros charged up. But I have been fishing a lot lately, and something that I've been experiencing lately, and you probably are seeing this too, is bait fish that are very small. You know, we're always looking for shad in the fall. It's, you know, it's a time-honored thing. You're always looking for bait fish. But the problem is a lot of them are very, very small. They're an inch long. You know, and those fish are used to seeing those little bait fish. They're eating them. And, you know, I'm not throwing a one-inch bait. I don't have, you know, little crappie swim baits or anything like that. But what I have been doing is downsizing my baits making some modifications and one little tricky bait that I've been using from Japan. I'm gonna show you those three things right now, three things that have been working for me this fall when the bass are eating tiny bait fish. So we'll jump right into one of the, the most obvious ones and it's really just a modification that I make to the tried and true jackhammer. So what I like to do is trim the skirt way back. You know, I didn't do that good of a job on this one. There's still some long strands on it, but it's still one way to make your bait appear smaller also using a trailer like this. This is the Strike, Strike King Baby Z2. That's a little tiny three inch fluke bait. It helps make that whole package look smaller. Uh, if you watch my chatterbait trailer video, you know, I love this style of chatterbait trailer, you know, fluke style bait because it's gonna give the bait a more hunting action. You know, it's gonna be running true and it's gonna kick side to side. Coupled with that shorter skirt, this bait has a completely different action than a standard jackhammer or any chatterbait that you like to throw. You know, the, the striking thunder cricket, any of those, same principle. But it's one way to downsize your bait, make it look smaller, and give it a different, completely different action. So that's something I've been catching a lot of fish on, is the old jackhammer trimmed back with the small trailer. So that's a pretty simple one. The other one is, is also pretty simple, and it's, you know, I mean, everyone throws a buzz bait this time of year, you know, especially with a plastic on the back, you know, this is the Lake Fork Magic Shad. You know, some people like horny toads. You know, you can throw all kinds of plastics on there. But what I've been doing is using these little 1 8 ounce buzz baits. So you still get that great buzzing action, but again, it's gonna be a smaller package. It still casts really well. I'm still fishing it on, you know, bait cast gear with 15 pound tests. You know, you can still fling it out there, but it's just gonna match those smaller bait fish better. You know, it, it's, it's something that I, I've been having success with. I really like that magic shad on there. It doesn't have a lot of action on it, but it has an extra enough extra weight and everything else that you want from a soft plastic on the back of your buzz bait. So those are two pretty simple things you can do. You know, just modify your baits and downsize your baits. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. The other one is is a little trickier, and this is actually going to something that I've been playing with a lot this year, and this is the Depths Wagasaki Shad. So they have our Wakasagi bait. So there's two versions of these little three inch baits. There's a sinking and a floating. They're just little tiny bite sized topwater baits. They don't do a lot. Uh, you know, they have little darting action. It's not gonna be very aggressive. It's got that mylar flash on it to help look like a bait fish even more. It's kind of unique too, because it just has one treble hook on it. It's also on a swivel, you know, so theoretically it's gonna help you land more fish. You know, they can't shake that treble as well. And it, it does, I mean, it hooks them pretty good. You know, I do wish for somehow there was two treble hooks on it. I think you'd hook up even better, but it is what it is. I mean, it's a cool looking bait. It's a 65 millimeters, what it says on there. So really small little bait, does a great job for imitating bass or shad that, those little tiny shad that bass are eating. Now, one downside to this is it is such a light bait that you gotta use spinning tackle. You know, I just have it on a standard braid to fluorocarbon leader setup. You know, you could use mono if, you, if you're worried about uh, the fluorocarbon sinking it down, but I really haven't had any, any issue with that at all. So it's a medium light rod. You can really cast it out there pretty well with a spinning setup like this. You know, it's not gonna be able to bomb like you can a, a spook or a big top water bait, but it'll get the job done. Cool little bait from Japan, the Depths Wagasaki Shad. They are available in the United States. Uh, Tackle Warehouse carries them. Very cool, definitely something different than uh, a standard top water bait that you know everyone else is using. So a couple other things you could do, you know, you could use a little popper, you know, that's a good option too. Um, just downsize your top water bait. You know, there's a lot of ways that you can get around this problem that we see this time of year. For some reason, those shad, maybe it's just, they're just born this year and they're that big. It just happens every year, this time of year, 
and it can be really tricky. So that's how I do it. That's how I've been catching fish lately. I'll see you next time on the water. Don't forget to like and subscribe.